Scott Morrison with Nick Kiprios and I. There were points of concern during the course of this tournament for Team Canada coming out of the preliminary round in that overtime victory over Finland and then you get pushed by the Latvians but this was a very controlled effort when you reflect on it from the start to the end. Yeah, and I almost think it, it almost has a bit of a mirror image to 2010 when we were in Vancouver and similar kind of conversations that we had. Lack of scoring, what's wrong with Sid, who's going to play with Sid. Of course, in Vancouver, we didn't find that out till the last game when uh, Aginla and, and Crosby uh, got together for the, the, the big goal. But... For whatever reason, I think we can come to the conclusion that we are notoriously so slow starters in this tournament. But like I think Babcock has said, it, there is a process there, and the process has to be seen right from start to finish. And at times, as Canadians, we probably don't have as much patience as we should have. But at the end of the day, the lack of scoring, Scott, didn't really matter uh, based on the fact that uh, they saved their best for last. Yeah, no question about it. And as you mentioned the process. It seemed they wanted to get everybody into a game situation. They juggled their lines, and once Babcock took charge of the situation, settled things down, fixed his lines, that's when they started to play better as a team, and they clearly bought into the defense-first formula and were just absolutely dominant in that regard. In the NHL era, it's been significant to point out that Wayne Gretzky's participated in the Olympic Games. Uh, team Canada ended a 50-year drought in Salt Lake City. The men's hockey team won on home soil in Vancouver. And then you have this team, Scott, that went through undefeated in Sochi. And because we have to compare things, where would you rank this roster and this tournament performance against other Team Canada victories? Well, I think the 2010 team was obviously very special. 2002 was a great team as well because of the people that were involved in it and what they had to overcome from a slow start, losing to Sweden out of the gate in that uh, particular games. This team had an easier draw, but when they got to the tough competition, obviously facing the Americans and then ultimately the Swedes in the gold medal game to not give up a goal, to outscore the opposition 17-3 to in the tournament, that is powerful. And again, this is a team, as Nick mentioned, had to evolve as they got through it, but boy, when they got to crunch time, they were just powerful. I think you'll always be able to debate uh, in any era or any Olympic uh, which team at times was the most dominating or the best. But statistically speaking, this is the best team ever. To give up just three goals in six games and not have Carey Price lead the headlines every game to me is phenomenal. I look at that blue line and people tell me in 76 with the Canada Cup with Dennis Potvin, Bobby Orr, Serge Savard, Larry Robinson, that was pretty good. But this one will be going down for the ages as well with uh, Doughty and Weber leading the way. And that great defense wasn't a team that was on its heels, that had to have fabulous goaltending every night, and, and their defense was rock solid. We know that. But part of that great defense is that they owned the puck, and they created chances. They couldn't finish, but they created a ton of chances. I'm not sure you can call it dominating as much as control. That's exactly what they did in the 2014 tournament.